Greetings, I'm Laurie Riopel, Director of Leadership Development, and I'm joined here today by Diana Fetterman, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, Jen Karras, Director of Professional Development, and Harvey Oaxaca, Director of Multicultural Education. Today, we're going to talk about Core Action 2 and the link to our focus model of instruction. As always, we start with our welcoming ritual. Take a minute to turn and talk with your neighbor and share one recent instructional success that you've had and one recent area of opportunity for growth. We're going to pause and let you do that. Now that you've had a chance to share with your neighbor, turn and talk with your table and share your experiences. Today we're going to look at the essential question of what does quality standard-based instruction look like through the core actions? As we go through the presentation, keep this question in mind. The core actions provide us with the basis for literacy instruction. The three core actions are text, tasks, and talk. Text is grade level appropriate text that provides for rich discussion in our literacy classrooms. Tasks refer to tasks that are built on the grade level standards and ta talk allows for all of our students to engage in talk around these tasks. By engaging in our core actions, it will help to improve literacy instruction and literacy outcomes for all students. So if we can move on to our next slide, we can see an element of a scale. By looking at this example of a scale, we can see how the 3.0 has the appropriate standard. Now I would like you to turn and talk to the people at your table. Discuss how this scale is built. What do you notice? And what might this result in as far as the amount of instructional time in the classroom? At what level do you think the majority of the instructional time will be spent? Turn and talk. Welcome back. Now let's take a more in-depth look at this scale. This is an example of a scale that might be found in an elementary literacy classroom. The scale was built for the third grade standard of RL 1.2. Recount stories including fables, folk tales, and myths from diverse cultures, determine the central message, lesson, or moral, and explain how it's conveyed through key details in a text. When building a scale, the 3.0 is the standard. The 2.0 details the prerequisite skills and knowledge students must have or know in order to master the standard. Because of the way the 2.0 is bulleted out into discrete skills, it's easy for the teacher and students to become focused on those aspects. As a result, the majority of class time might be spent here. The issue arises because the skills under the 2.0 version are below the grade level of the standard, so students spend a large portion of the class time focused on skills that are below grade level. Since the 3.0 represents the grade level standard, that is where the majority of instruction and class time should be spent. However, we know students might need assistance with prerequisite skills in order to get to the grade level standard. Breaking down the grade level standard under the 3.0 version of the standard is something that we realize teachers need assistance with. We know how much teachers have on their plate. On Blender, under the standards portion of each of the grade level pages, teachers can find the breakdown of each standard available for them so they can find the bulleted list of each standard. By breaking down the standard into these discrete skills, it can be very helpful for teachers. Now let's move on to a secondary version of a scale and we can see a similar breakdown. Let's move on to that secondary version now. Go ahead and take a look at this scale. What do you notice here as far as what is on the 3.0 version and the 2.0 version? Take a moment and talk to the people at your table about what you notice here. Okay. 
Welcome back. Now that you've had a few moments to talk about this version of the scale with your partners, I want to go ahead and take a deeper look at this version of the scale. This is an example of a scale that might be found in a secondary literacy classroom. The scale was built for an eighth grade standard of RL 1.2. Determine a theme or central idea of a text and analyze its development over the course of the text, including its relationship to the character, setting, and plot and provide an objective summary of the text. The 2.0 details the prerequisite skills and knowledge students must have in order to master the standard. Because of the way the 2.0 is bulleted out into discrete skills, it's easy for the teacher and students to become focused on those aspects. As a result, the majority of class time might be spent here. The issue arises because the skills under the 2.0 version are below the grade level of the standard. So students spend a large portion of class time focused on skills that are below grade level. Since the 3.0 represents the grade level standard, that is where the majority of the class time and instruction should be spent. However, we understand that students might need assistance with understanding those prerequisite skills in order to get to the grade level version. What we have here is what a scale might look like. It provides bulleted concepts of the 3.0 version or the standard. In order to assist teachers with this, under the standards tab on Blender, we have provided bulleted pieces of each standard for teachers. This allows teachers to create scales with those discrete skills listed out for each of the standards. So as each of you walk into classrooms or you go to observe a peer, I'm sure there's tips and tricks you might use to make sure that the instruction is aligned to the rigor of the standard. Take a look at this slide and let's look at this list that is not inclusive by all means, but will offer you some suggestions. Are students working on the grade level standard, including the verb and all parts of the standard? Note the verb of the standard and the task students are working on. Does the task match the level of rigor of the standard? Look at the student's writing in a workbook or notebook. Do all the students underline the same words, make the same notes, or have the same answers? That might be a telltale sign that the teacher is telling them what to do. Do anchor charts provide students with scaffolds to get to answers, or do they provide answers? How much time do you allot for teacher talk versus student talk when you're planning? Now we're going to take a minute and share some ways that you make sure instruction is aligned to the standard. Using a sticky note, write down one tip that you use when either you're teaching or visiting another classroom. Welcome back. We're going to take a minute and get you up, get you moving. Go to another person at a different table and share what you've written on your sticky note. See if your tip or trick might help your colleague. As we have learned, planning is essential to ensure high quality standards based instruction. This aligns with the first domain of the focus model. When planning, key questions to consider may include, what foundational pieces should be taught in whole group, most students need them, and which can be taught during small group instruction for a few students. How will I pace my instruction throughout this unit? How will I address the foundational skills while keeping the focus on grade level standards-based expectations? And what types of scaffolding do I need to provide and ensure all students can learn? Effective instructional scaffolds require teachers to be familiar with both grade level standards or the outcomes and the needs for their students or their current performance. Scaffolds should be sensitive to students' strengths and challenges, standards-based, in alignment with learning targets or objectives, applied to the process of meeting the learning target, and temporary, used to provide a student with necessary supports to accommodate a task that is not otherwise possible, appropriate to the task, and respectful for all learners. A scaffold is a temporary support provided to students to help them achieve a learning goal. Scaffolds are distinct from accommodations or modifications. An accommodation is similar in concept to a scaffold, but is usually a legally mandated instructional requirement. An example of an accommodation would be extra time on a summative test. 
and a modification goes deeper than a scaffold and changes the actual content and or learning standards for a student. A modification can be found on a student's individualized education plan, also known as an IEP. So when considering different types of scaffolds within a literacy block, we have instructional scaffolding, scaffolding students to more complex texts, scaffolding students to the more complex tasks, and language scaffolding. So as we tie it together with the focus model and domain two, standards-based instruction, and reviewing the content of element, helping students examine their reasoning, examples of scaffolding, what examples of scaffolding may you see? Model the process of making and supporting a claim, model constructing viable arguments, and critiquing mathematical reasoning. Digging deeper into helping students practice skills, strategies, and processes, take a moment to review this protocol and what scaffolds you see embedded. Please take a moment to share with your colleagues some of the different scaffolds you notice within this protocol. To further ensure appropriate scaffolds, we will also see this in Domain 3, Conditions for Learning. As you review Domain 3, what conditions are necessary to ensure standards-based instruction and scaffold, scaffolds appropriate for your students? Now that Jen has walked us through how you can scaffold students through instruction using the Marzano elements, I want to talk about how to scaffold students to more complex texts. It's important that all students have access to on grade level text during the literacy block or ELA class, but sometimes they can struggle to comprehend that text. That's when scaffolding is crucial. The trick to is knowing when to scaffold. During read alouds, when the teacher is doing the decoding work, the level of the text should be on or even above grade level as the teacher is doing the difficult reading work while students either follow along in text or listen. If text is read as part of shared reading in a group, that should still be at grade level as students work together to decode the text. For small group work where teachers use data to work on the areas where students need help, the level of text should match the student's instructional reading level. One of the goals of these groups is to move students to the complexity of the grade level text. This work with complex text is important for all students including our students with learning differences in English language learners. Access to grade level text is critical to success with literacy skills and needs to be available to all learners. Now you will see an example of scaffolding to complex text from one of our literacy classrooms. In this example, you can see students are working with a piece of complex text, a William Carlos Williams poem. The teacher first reads the poem aloud to students so they can hear a model of fluency and the cadence of the work. This is one scaffold for students. The next one is for students to then reread it with a partner in chunks. This is the next scaffold. While doing so, the teacher provides students with a purpose for reading, scaffold three, with the questions you see on the slide. She doesn't have them write the answers yet, these are merely questions for them to consider as they read. These scaffolds help all students access the complex text so they can get, engage in the standards-based tasks. Now you see Core Action 2, which focuses on standards-based tasks. Please review these questions on the slide. They can provide you with guiding questions to engage in during other PLC time, department time, grade level planning time, or on your own as you work on planning lessons and creating standards-based tasks for your students. Of course, in addition to Core Action 2, standards-based tasks, you want to keep in mind Core Action 3, collaboration and talk. We want to make sure we allow all students the opportunity to work together and engage in these tasks. These points on the screen provide you with areas or thoughts to consider as you're planning. They make sure you have intentional places for collaboration to take place. You will see on the next slide 
ways to scaffold for students so they can tackle these complex tasks. These include grouping in either homogeneous or heterogeneous groups, depending on the purpose, or using anchor charts, partner work, question cards, or structured roles within those groups. Additionally, on the next slide, you can see different ways we have seen in literacy classrooms for teachers to utilize anchor charts in order to provide scaffolds for students. The important thing with anchor charts is not to merely provide answers for students, but to provide scaffolds for students to find answers on their own. Now we will look at some examples of how teachers in our literacy classrooms have used questioning and anchor charts in order to provide students scaffolds through complex texts and tasks. The first one is how teachers have used some questions. Here the teacher is building to a fourth grade standard of RL 1.3. Describe in depth a character, setting, or event in a story or drama drawing on specific details in the text. At first, the teacher asks how the main character feels about poetry in the beginning of the story. The second question asks for the evidence to support the answer. The third question asks how the main character feels about poetry at the end of the story. The fourth question asks for evidence to support that answer. Finally, the last question asks about what caused that change. The structure of the questions help the students progress through the pieces of the story and gather the evidence in order to complete the task of the standard. By breaking it into concrete steps, more students are able to complete it than if the teacher had asked for the same information in one multi-step question. The next example shows two anchor charts from a classroom. You can note that these anchor charts provide scaffolding questions as opposed to just the answers. For example, on the theme chart, there is a section titled, Questions to Ask Yourself, in order to determine theme. Students that need assistance can use this chart as a scaffold for determining the theme of a story, as opposed to looking to a chart for an answer. The summarize chart does something similar. It provides students with a step-by-step -step process for writing a summary. Since these charts are in a classroom of a technology trailblazer teacher, they are also accompanied by QR codes where students can access sites for even more information. It's time to stop and reflect on our learning. Think about what effective scaffolding looks like for you at your school. Take a minute, turn and talk, and share with your neighbor how you use and see effective scaffolding practices within your classrooms. Now take a minute and share at your table the ideas of effective scaffolding that you came up with. The fourth area that we should look at when thinking about scaffolding is scaffolding for language. The Department of Multicultural Education has collaborated with the Department of Professional Development to align language strategies and scaffolds to the focus model elements. A new unit has been created on both the ESOL Elementary and ESOL Secondary Blender pages and is called Connecting Focus Model and Go-To Strategies. When you get to the Blender page, you can click on the box and get to this unit. Each element for the standards-based instruction and conditions for learning domains have a link. When you click on an element, such as identifying critical content from the standards, you will be able to view the protocol from the focus model. Here is the protocol for identifying critical content from the standards. As you scroll down, you will see a box with examples of go-to strategies that support that element. If you click on a specific strategy, the strategy will be described in a two-column chart characterizing the teacher's actions and the student actions for each strategy. These descriptions will help clarify to the instructional content of the strategies. This is an excellent resource to find strategies and scaffolds appropriate for each element and for the English language proficiency of your ELs in your classrooms. Another resource that is found on the ESOL Blender pages is our How Do I series. In this section, you will find a brief series on connecting the focus model to the go-to strategies in several Breeze presentations. When planning for language scaffolding, 
This visual provides an easy reference for everyone. Generally speaking, language scaffolds fall into three broad categories, sensory, interactive, and graphic scaffolds. As you can see in the picture, under each category, there is a list of scaffolds which aligns to the go-to strategies. As well, there is a description of when these types of scaffolds can be best utilized and the purpose behind each of them and each category of scaffolds. The key takeaway is to remember that language scaffolds should be ongoing and should be changed throughout the year. As an English language learner, we'll be acquiring more language throughout the year, and the scaffolds should change to meet the learner's needs. Now let's practice. Take a minute to read the scenario and follow up questions on the screen. Welcome back. Now at your table, share your responses and any advice or suggestions you might give to the new teacher at your school. The work of a literacy teacher is incredibly difficult. It is a delicate balancing act to incorporate grade level text with standards based tasks, all while ensuring you're providing the individual scaffolds that students need to access the texts and tasks. Thank you for the work you do each and every day to provide all of our students with a world class education. As we bring our time together to a close and honoring our adult social emotional learning practices, we would like to like for you to take a moment to reflect on your learning with us today. Using a sticky note, write three hashtags that summarize your learning as if you were going to tweet about this experience. Example, hashtag standards-based instruction, hashtag intentional planning, hashtag core actions rock. Thank you for spending this time with us today and we hope that you enjoyed your time learning more about the core actions and the focus model. We wish you all a wonderful day.